These are the offices of the Financial Services Authority in Canary Wharf, London. The FSA is the city regulator and is charged with taking action in relation to financial misconduct, particularly among those firms and persons whom it regulates in the industry. Today I'm going to be talking to Stephen Gilchrist, a partner in the regulatory department of Saunders Solicitors LLP, about the concept of market abuse and its significance in the recent collapse of the share price of HBOS, the biggest mortgage lender in the UK, which prompted speculation about the imminent collapse of the bank. Good afternoon, Stephen. Good afternoon. Now, you deal with the FSA regulation as part of your practice. Can you explain precisely what happened with HBOS? Yes, well, as we all know, in March 2008, the global economy was in a very frail state of health. Uh, there had been a run on Northern Rock in the United Kingdom, which led to its takeover by the government. Uh, Bear Stearns in the United States had collapsed as a result of liquidity problems. And what we think happened on March 19th in London was that rumours began circulating in the London stock market that uh, Halifax Bank of Scotland, known as HBOS, was facing a funding crisis and that the Bank of England was taking emergency measures to uh, deal with the liquidity problem in the bank. Now, as a result, the shares started to slide and in fact fell by about 17%. HBOS moved to deny any problems, as did the Bank of England, uh, the shares finally closed down 7%. But what's this got to do with market abuse? Well, regulators blamed uh, and are blaming uh, market abuse in the form of, uh, quote, lies spread by short sellers for the massive dive in HBOS's share price. Short sellers sell shares they don't own in the hope of buying them back at a lower price. So what is market abuse precisely? Well, market abuse is defined as behaviour relating to uh, qualifying market investments uh, based on information not generally available to those using the market, but information that would be considered relevant in deciding on transactions in that investment. Uh, furthermore, that behaviour must be likely to give a regular user of the market a false or misleading impression as to the supply of or the demand for the price or value of investments of the kind in question. Uh, and finally, regular users of the market would uh, be likely to regard that sort of behaviour as behaviour which would be likely to distort the market in, in investments of, of the kind in question. Um, market abuse consists primarily of insider information and market manipulation, uh, and there is uh, a market abuse directive which provides uh, uh, an EU-wide market abuse regime aimed at reducing the incidence of market abuse. Is what it really comes down to that market abuse is geared to insider dealing and insider information rather than false information as such. Where does that leave an F FSA investigation? Well, that's really quite an interesting question. I, I agree that the legislation seems to be aimed primarily at behaviour. Uh, behaviour can include action or inaction, which is genuine but is not generally known, rather than circulating false rumours. However, market abuse can also be based on manipulating transactions, trading or placing orders to trade, that give a false or misleading impression of the supply of or the demand for one or more investments, raising the price of an investment to an abnormal or artificial level, or using manipulating devices, or giving out information that conveys a false or misleading impression about an investment, or the issuer of an investment where the person doing this knows that the information is false or misleading. So this would bring it within the HBOS situation? Uh, yes, I think it would. Uh, and another example might be, for example, a person using an internet bulletin board or chat room to post information about the takeover of a company. The person knows the information to be false or misleading. Uh, this could artificially raise or reduce the price of a share and, and lead to people making the wrong investment decisions. What powers does the FSA have in investigating this sort of behaviour? Well, when the Financial Services and Markets Act, known as FISMA, um, came into effect some years ago, it led to a dramatic change in the regulatory landscape for organisations operating in the financial services industry. Uh, the FSA, the Financial Services Authority, is now the sole regulator of almost all financial services firms operating in the UK markets uh, in an effort to fight financial crime, and its powers include informal requests for information, formal investigations into an organisation's conduct, a full-blown disciplinary action. 
uh, the FSA has become increasingly willing to show its teeth and has taken well uh, publicised disciplinary action in certain cases. Uh, this has led to the FSA imposing fines and naming and shaming some very high profile businesses. FSA, uh, FSA sanctions imposed on a firm in, in respect of rule breaches uh, can include fining and public censure, making the firm pay compensation to clients who have lost out, variation or even cancellation of a firm's permission to undertake uh, regulated business. Can the FSA only discipline organisations and persons it authorises and approves? Well, that's the interesting thing about the concept of market abuse, because uh, in most cases, uh, a regulator can only uh, regulate, investigate, discipline those bodies that are part of the club, if you like, that are signed up members that are authorised. But in the case of market abuse, the FSA can investigate and fine even those persons who are not regulated by it. For example, in a well-publicised case, which this firm actually dealt with some time ago, an entrepreneur called Paul Davidson has fined £750,000 by the FSA for market abuse. Davidson was not regulated by the FSA, he didn't work within the regulated financial sector, but the FSA were still entitled to investigate him. However, as it happened, the Tribunal, the Financial Services and Markets Tribunal, uh, overturned that fine and uh, the finding of market abuse that was made against him in, in 2006. What is the status of an investigation by the FSA? Is it, for example, uh, akin to a criminal investigation? Well, uh, proceedings by the FSA, in common with other disciplinary proceedings uh, instigated by other regulatory authorities, are not criminal proceedings. Uh, and likewise, proceedings in relation to market abuse are not criminal proceedings, and you won't end up in a criminal court. However, the FSA have got the power to impose fines, but these can only be enforced by civil means, such as insolvency proceedings, bankruptcy and so on, or some other enforcement method which would normally be available in these civil courts. I see. Can the FSA start any criminal proceedings against those it suspects of uh, serious financial manipulation? Well, it is an offence under FISMA to dishonestly or recklessly to make false or misleading statements or to conceal material uh, facts to induce others to act in a particular way when deciding to engage or not to engage in a particular transaction. Uh, however, um, the only case that the FSA has brought for insider dealing, the only criminal case since it took over responsibility in 2001, is that recently brought in relation to the Motorola case. Uh, the case has been brought against two individuals who, it is said, started trading in advance of a, uh, a, an offer by Motorola to take over another company. And the advance trade is said to have been undertaken with the advantage of um, uh, inside information. Uh, although, of course, the case hasn't been tried yet. But basically, criminal proceedings instituted by the FSA are uh, comparatively rare. Uh, I should add, finally, that um, uh, recently the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Alistair Darling, has announced uh, a new proposal whereby whistleblowers uh, will be given immunity. That's to say, people who perhaps have participated in market abuse will be given immunity from prosecution if they blow the whistle on their colleagues and are prepared to assist in a prosecution. Um, and uh, the FSA is to be given special prosecutor status for that, re uh, for that purpose, but uh, these proposals have yet to be put into practice. Stephen Gilchrist, thank you very much. Thank you.